vaccinations. They're milestones in our lives, but we just don't think about them that often. They start when we're too young to remember, and they continue after we're old enough to forget. But in between, well, we just don't think about them that often until a global pandemic comes along. I'm Emily Nichols, and this is my vaccination story. It starts, well, when I was a baby, three months old. I got the standard shots, and again, on my first birthday. And after that, booster shots. In the 80s, we got them on sugar cubes. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the vaccination go down. Yep, that's how they did it. And then in my teen years, well, how well do you remember your sex ed classes? Did they make you memorize all of the STIs? Hepatitis B is a virus that attacks the liver and is spread in bodily fluids. Oof, yikes. But now, there's a shot for that. Working at summer camp, that was a rite of passage for me. But you couldn't work there unless you could prove you'd had a tetanus shot sometime in the last 10 years. Because you never know when you might step on a rusty nail and get a nasty bacterial infection. So you see what I mean? Vaccinations mark our childhood and our teenage years. And then we kind of forget about them. At least I sure did. Until I was in my 20s and my husband and I were planning to travel to South America. Let me tell you, the travel vaccines are a whole different ball of wax. You pay your $50 and you go to the travel vaccination clinic and they tell you which shots you need based on where you're going to go in the world. Now I needed a whole bunch more booster shots, plus I needed some new ones. I needed hepatitis A and cholera and typhoid and the big one, yellow fever. That would have been a very expensive doctor's visit that day, but thankfully we had good health insurance. Now there's been a lot of talk lately about vaccine passports and you know, how are they gonna work and where can we go? And honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I've had a vaccine passport since 2007 and my yellow fever certificate, the most important one, is right here on the front page. Why is it the most important? Well, some countries require it. You have to prove that you have that shot before they'll let you in. So in 2020, we decided we would go back to Peru, and when we left home, our vaccinations were completely up to date. But a global pandemic was already brewing. And by the time we got back home, Canada was just days away from implementing self-isolation for returning travelers, and just weeks away from closing the border completely. But it turns out that border closures are not new either. I looked back in my family history and I found out that my great-great-grandpa's brother left Southern Ontario to go and make his fortune in Central America. And after a few years away, he got sick. He tried to come home, but he was turned away in New Orleans because of yellow fever. Edward McMillan died in Belize, age 33, a long way from home in Southern Ontario. It was 1905. So I'm amazed. When I think about all the places I've traveled and all the adventures I've had and all the diseases I won't get, thanks to my vaccinations. I've had shots for diphtheria, pertussis, polio, tetanus, measles, mumps, rubella, hepatitis A and B and cholera, typhoid, yellow fever, and lucky 13, COVID-19. You might notice that I didn't mention smallpox. I was born in the 70s and smallpox had just been eradicated. So unlike the previous generation, I don't have one of those pock marks on my left shoulder, but I do have one in my eyebrow. I got the chicken pox when I was six and I must have scratched this one really hard because I've got this funny little place in my eyebrow where the hair won't grow. Maybe I'm the only gal you know who has to comb over her eyebrow. But now there's a shot for that. My niece and nephew won't get the chicken pox. So vaccinations are milestones in our lives, but the vaccines that are available to us in our lifetimes, well, they mark our place in history. One travel shot that I didn't get, the rabies vaccine. You see, the travel doctor explained to me that even if I had the shots before I went, if I got bitten by an animal, I would have to get more shots. And besides, it was really unlikely that I was going to get bitten by an animal, so I skipped it. And of course, I managed to get bitten by a dog in rural Peru. 
In a place where there was no bus service, no shops, no running water. But the veterinarian was in town that night. So we found him and talked with him and he said, Emily, you don't have to worry because I have vaccinated every dog in this whole area for rabies. And since the dogs had had their shots, I didn't need mine. Whew. Dodged a bullet there. But you can't dodge them all, you know? One I didn't dodge was, well, I got fired from my job once. And you might think, Emily, what does that have to do with vaccinations? But I tell you, one of the very first things I did after I got that news was to go and make sure that my shots were up to date because I wanted to be sure I was ready for my next adventure before my health insurance ran out. So yeah, I think of vaccinations as milestones in life, gateways to good health, and turnstiles on the way to adventure. Of course, I do try to avoid rusty nails, dirty water, angry dogs, and bodily fluids, but I can play full out, because I know I'm covered. The one thing I do have to remember, before I take that selfie, I better comb over my eyebrow.